Welcome to the Ruckus Associates Smart Zone Administrator Demonstration Series for the Smart Zone OS 5 release. In this course, we will show you the functionality of Smart Zone OS 5 along with the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this specific video, we will provide you details on user authentication and the various authentication methods available in Smart Zone. So let's get started. AAA Authentication Servers. In order to understand the AAA services available in SmartZone, you need to understand the difference between proxy and non-proxy AAA services. The proxy AAA, the authentication is managed from the controller and the controller communicates with the AAA server. With non-proxy AAA services, the authentication is managed between the access point and the AAA server directly. The controller is not part of the authentication process. The proxy and non-proxy servers are configured underneath the services and profiles and authentication. As you can see, there's two different tabs of non-proxy and proxy that can be configured. Non-proxy service is configured underneath the specific zones underneath a domain. Whereas a proxy service is configured for the domain itself. Also, both can be configured to allow for RADIUS connections, Active Directory connections, and LDAP services as well. Let's start with the non-proxy servers first. Now do know the configurations that I'm going to show you are being configured on a virtual high-scale controller, though you should have no problem relating these settings to what you see on a virtual essentials controller, a Smart Zone 100, or a Smart Zone 300 as well. Now you first have to ensure that you have selected the non-proxy authenticator. Then you'll go down to the zone that you want it configured on. Know that the non-proxy is configured on a per zone basis, so we'll need to drill down to the zone that we want to apply this configuration for. Once we've done that, we'll click on the Create button. So a couple of things to first notice is the default behavior is for it to be configured on RADIUS, although you have an option of RADIUS, Active Directory, and LDAP as well. Another thing for you to notice is that each one of the fields that are required will have the asterisk by it. So we'll need to configure these fields for this to function correctly. Those fields specifically are the name, the type of authentication, the IP address of the server, the port in which we are going to connect with, and the secret that we are going to use to authenticate to that device. Additionally, cluster geo-redundancy configurations on high-scale deployments can also be applied to a non-proxy authentication server if your smart zone instance was previously configured. This allows different AAA servers to be configured on active and standby clusters, providing additional redundancy in large enterprise and service provider deployments. This option is available regardless of which authentication methods are chosen. More details on geo-clustering is discussed in different modules within this course. In addition to the geo-redundancy, you can also provide a secondary backup RADIUS server as well. You slide this to on, and as you can see, the secondary server appears, and you can configure this. Again, it requires all the standard configurations as the primary server. To create an Active Directory server, provide the reference name for the server, select the Active Directory button, and configure the IP address and port. The global catalog of the AD server can be provided if enabled. Additional fields in this form will appear requiring admin authentication credentials for the AD server if this option is used. For an LDAP server, provide the name like the other authentication methods, and underneath the LDAP button, you will provide the necessary configuration for the primary server. Note that name, type, IP address, port, domain names, password, key attribute, and search filter are required for an LDAP configuration. Now let's talk about the proxy AAA servers. 
Notice under the proxy configuration, there's already populated options underneath that tab. One is local database, and the other is always accept or guest access. The local database, if used, can be populated by navigating to the clients, users and roles, and then local users. The controller's local user database can include 802.1x and Whisper users underneath the system or partner domains. Creating a proxy AAA server is very easy. Select the Proxy tab and notice that proxies are configured from a domain perspective as well. Once we select on the domain, we can go in and select Create. Notice the service protocol options that you have when it comes to a proxy server are similar to the non-proxy as well. The initial configuration of a proxy radius server is similar to the non-proxy server. Enter the required settings and a standby cluster primary and secondary server can be configured if required. Additionally though, there is support for the RFC 5580 location delivery on the wireless LAN and it carries location information to the RADIUS exchanges. Additionally, when using proxy as your authentication method, whenever the SSH tunnel between the AP and the controller is down, you can enable a backup authentication service. This provides an alternative to the AP's authentication services to a secondary device. When configuring the backup authentication service, there are additional options such as automatic fallback disable and other configurable health check policies that you can configure when applying a secondary server. Other radius settings can include the configuration of a health check policy and enabling rate limiting. The response window sets the AAA server response time it has to respond to the request. If no response is received, the controller will initiate the zombie period. Additionally, at this time, the controller will forward the retransmitted radius messages to the secondary AAA server. The zombie period value waits to hear back from the primary server. However, if no response is received during that period, the controller is considered inactive or unreachable. The revive interval is the time period after which if no radius messages are sent as proxy to the AAA server after it has been marked as inactive or unreachable, the controller will mark a AAA server as active again. The values shown in the image are the default values. The no response fail option allows a yes to respond to a rejected message of the NAS if no response is received from the radius server. Click no to skip sending a response. Rate limiting allows the maximum outstanding request to be set with a maximum outstanding request per server. Type zero to disable this feature or set the value between 10 and 4096. For an active directory server, select the active directory button and add the primary server details. As with the other services, a primary standby cluster configuration can be applied when using AD for authentication. When using LDAP, it allows authentication against any LDAP compliant database. Simply configure the required settings of name, service protocol, IP address and its port, domain names, the password, the key attribute, and the search filter. Now with all these AAA services, each can be configured with their user role mapping. When a user is successfully authenticated against a AAA server, the AAA server can respond with information about that user in a form of a group attribute. With this attribute you receive, you can associate a profile to influence how the user connects to the wireless LAN. This process is called user traffic profile mapping. User traffic profile mapping is available as an option for all AAA authentication types. Under the user profile mapping, the group attribute value received from the AAA server is mapped to a configurable user role. If one doesn't exist, you can create one here. Further, the user role can be associated with a user traffic profile applying certain access parameters to that user. 
When a group attribute is received from the AAA authentication server, the additional configurations will be applied to the user and device. Only users that have a group attribute value sent from the AAA server and there is a configured user role associated with that attribute will have a user profile applied. Along with Access VLAN assignment, other configurable options for user traffic profiles can be configured, including rate limiting, traffic access control, application recognition, and URL filtering. Each group attribute received from the AAA server can be mapped to a different user profile, which can have a unique traffic profile associated with it. Now let's look at configuring a proxy AAA server on a high-scale deployment. When using a high-scale deployment in SmartZone, realm-based profiles are used. Because of the possibility of multi-tenant use or capabilities of a high-scale deployment of SmartZone when AAA authentication is required, the use of an authentication realm profile is used. This provides additional capabilities such as VLAN assignment as well as 3GPP authentication options within the same location based on the tenant's realm. As previously mentioned, proxy and non-proxy servers are configured under services and profiles and then authentication. The servers provide user authentication using RADIUS, Active Directory, and LDAP. Realm-based proxies use proxy authentication options configured within the proxy tab, which is then are added to the realm-based profile as needed. As with proxy servers, realm-based proxies are configured from a domain level. So select your domain and push Create. The two realm-based authentication services that are pre-configured are no match and unspecified. The no match option allows for authentication regardless of the realms configured in the RADIUS authentication server. Therefore, you can modify the authentication method for the default of disable to match your proxy authentication method. If a proxy authentication method has previously been created, it will be an option in this drop down menu. Otherwise, you can create a proxy authentication server by clicking on the plus sign. Authentication services are configured as shown previously and can be used in this profile as an authentication method. Once a service has been selected, optionally a VLAN assignment can be configured allowing user traffic to be assigned to a specific network allowing for its unique DHCP assignments to be received. You can see that once the configuration is complete, the information is updated based on the protocol that's being used as well as the off service that was being selected. To ensure proper handling of all authentication on the profile, it is good to define an unspecified realm and map it to a corresponding authentication service to properly handle legacy or non-hotspot 2.0 devices. So once these are configured, let's see how we can test those connections within SmartZone. So now to test your authentication methods you've configured, you go to Services and Profiles and then back to Authentication. With proxy authentication, you're going to be authenticating from the controller, which is where the authentication will be taking place. However, if you do try to test your non-proxy configurations or authentication methods, do know that just because you have a successful test when it comes to this authentication method does not necessarily mean your access point will have that success. So it's best to go to the access point directly, connect a device to it, and test in that manner. But when it comes to configuring from a proxy standpoint, testing from the proxy itself is beneficial. We go into test triple A, we'll put in the username, and then the password. Once you push test, you should receive a positive response back. And if everything is configured, that is the case, as we see here. If something is not configured correctly, go back and review your settings to make sure that everything is set up correctly. 
Once you've configured your AAA authentication services, regardless if it's proxy or non-proxy, it has the ability to be used to authenticate users from a wired or wireless perspective when connecting to an access point. How it does this is when the user connects, then they'll be prompted to enter their username and password. The AAA server checks these credentials against its database. If it finds a matching account and the password is correct, the user can continue with their connection. So now when creating an 802.1x wireless LAN or converting a previous one to an authentication method of 802.1x, those configurable options are going to be underneath your wireless LAN general settings. So first we're going to go back to our wireless LAN. So we're going to click on the wireless LANs here. In our case, we're going to actually change a existing wireless LAN to do 802.1x authentication. So we'll select that wireless LAN, we'll click on configure, and we can see the previous one was set to an open method and using a WPA2 as the encryption options. We have a pre-shared key that we have pre-shared out, uh, and we're going to change that authentication method to an 802.1x EAP. So we select this radio button here, we do see that passphrase goes away, and then we'll scroll on down to the authentication and accounting service. We have an option to select an authentication service. We can use this either as a proxy or a non-proxy. We have set both of those authentication methods, so if we were to not set it for a proxy, you could see that authentication method is in our drop-down list. Either that or we can create a new one by pushing the plus sign. If we want to use the controller as a proxy service, we select the on here, and then we can see in the drop-down list our realm-based proxy option, because this is a high-scale deployment, is available for us to select. Again, we can also configure this, if we so choose, by pushing the plus sign. Also, if we select this particular service, we can go in and change the settings for it as well by clicking on the pencil. Now because this is a high scale deployment, do know that this is the realm based proxy service. That foundation of the authentication is that, serve, that proxy service of partner X authentication that we configured earlier. Once we have made the changes and the selections we want on this wireless LAN service, these two settings are all we need to allow this particular wireless LAN now to have authentication services applied to it when it comes to users connecting to that wireless LAN. You can see also once we made that change it's reflected in the authentication method within the listing of that wireless LAN as well. You can see now that we can go to a wireless device and attempt to connect to that network. When we go to that network you will notice that this time it asks for an identity. So we're going to put in that identity and then we're going to scroll down and put in the password that it requires now. And then push connect. Authentication goes out to the AAA authentication service that we have set up. And as a result, you can see we have successful connection based on the 802.1x standard. Thank you for taking the time of watching this video of user authentication when using SmartZone. There's other videos in this series that teach you other features and other things that can be configured within SmartZone OS 5. I encourage you to go out and look at the other videos within this series that provide you other features that can be configured within SmartZone OS 5. Thanks for watching.